Hey y'all, welcome back to another ballistics gel test. Today we're taking a break from deer and medium game focused ammunition and we're gonna be shooting some varmint ammo. I've got Hornady Super Performance Varmint 53 grain VMAX and 223 Remington. And here is the box for that Hornady Super Performance Varmint, the 53 grain VMAX load. Let's flip it around to the back. Here is some of your promo info from Hornady. You can stop, pause, and read all that if you would like to. Here is your ballistics information. This stuff is scooting right along almost 3,500 feet per second, supposedly. We'll see how it does out of the 18-inch barrel of my CZ. But let's go ahead and open the box, see what the stuff looks like. Hornady brass and ammo is usually pretty darn clean looking, and this is no exception to that. The brass looks really nice. Let's yank one out. And there you go, there's your 53 grain lightweight VMAX bullet. Let's see what it does. And the test rifle today is my CZ527 carbine. It's got an 18 or 18 and a half inch barrel, I don't exactly recall. Chambered in 223, of course. Up top, I've got a Vortex Crossfire 2 3 to 9 by 40 scope. And coming on back, I've got one of my leather cartridge pouch cuffs, which incidentally perfectly holds a CZ527 magazine, coincidentally enough, so it works for that as well. Check out my website, masonleather.com. I would absolutely love to make you one. And coming around to the other side, I've got to show you, I've got my wild boar design. We'll be taking three shots from 100 yards, firing into 10% ballistics gel that has been calibrated to meet the FBI's ballistics testing protocol. And while ballistics gel isn't an exact proxy for big game, it does provide a repeatable medium through which to test various bullets and ammo against each other. After the shots, we'll examine bullet expansion, weight retention, penetration, and velocity. My goal is to provide hunters like you and I with the most objective information possible to help us make the best choice for our particular hunting situation. The ballistics gel in this video has been sourced from Clear Ballistics. You can find a link in the description. So let's go ahead and shoot it. And we are down here at the blocks after shooting that Hornady Super Performance 53 grain VMAX load. Let's go ahead and take a look. And it did pretty much exactly what a good varmint bullet should do. We captured all three bullets. We got a lot of wound cavity right up front initially. You see it kind of blows up at about eh, the one and a half, really it was far, as early as the one inch mark expands out boom kaboom it goes all the way back to about the four inch mark that would be perfect for something like a coyote and then coming on back we have the main masses of each of the three bullets right there right there and right there and respectively we got about i'll give that one eight inches of penetration this one i'll give nine and this one i'll give nine and a half all in all that is some excellent performance and let's take a look at the velocities for that hornady super performance 53 grain v max stuff our high is 3236 our low is 3182 and our average is 3215 and here we are looking at what remains of the hornady Super performance varmint 53 grain v max bullets as recovered from the ballistics gel um it's it's a little bit silly to even go over the weight retention and expansion because i mean these did what varmint bullets are supposed to do which is break up into a bunch of pieces and just deliver a ton of shock and ideally not exit so that you can save the pelt of whatever the fur bearer or varmint is that you shot with it but we'll hit the metric for what they're worth so weight retention wise on these main pieces that i was able to recover it was eight grains nine grains and 11 grains and i know there's four pieces here but one of them i didn't weigh because it was just like a chunk of jacket it it, it completely had separated i'm just showing these bits and pieces because it's what i was able to recover and then expansion wise i didn't measure it i mean we're talking about little chunks here and by the way, I forgot to mention it, but average weight retention then is nine grains for, you know, what was left over. And that works out to 18% retained weight. Again, a misnomer because these did what varmint bullets are supposed to do, which is basically explode. And now on to velocity. Our high was 3236. Our low was 3182 for an average of 3215 versus the factory build velocity of 3465. So these came in very slow out of our 18 inch barreled CZ rifle, 250 feet per second slow. No doubt the factory is using a 24 inch barrel to test these things. And then on to penetration. For these main chunks that were recovered, 
They were at eight, nine, and nine and a half inches respectively for an average of nine inches of total penetration. But the majority of the bullets that broke up, all of that, you know, mess and fragments and all that was between about the two and eight inch mark, which is what you want for a bullet like this. And then kinetic energy wise for a 53 grain bullet, Going on average 3,215 feet per second, that works out to 1,216 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. All right, y'all, time for my final thoughts on that Hornady Superformance Varmint load with the 53 grain VMAX out of the 223. This is a little bit of a deviation. Mostly I focus on like deer hunting ammo, medium game hunting ammo, but I had some of this stuff figured we might as well shoot it and see what it does. And it did not disappoint. This stuff performed exactly how I would want a Varmint load to perform. Weight retention wise, arguably i mean kind of like nothing but the chunks i was able to recover that were the main chunks left in the gel nine grains on average 18 percent you know weight retention for what that's worth it really wasn't weight retention it was just the biggest chunks that were there um expansion there there wasn't the expansion you know to speak of any max diameter it broke up into a bunch of pieces which is exactly what you want from a varmint bullet like this v max they're known for blowing up that's what people are looking for, and that's exactly what these did. Velocity-wise, we came in quite a bit slower than the factory build velocity, 250 feet per second slow. Again, shooting this from an 18-inch barreled carbine. There are 24-inch barreled 223s out there. Guys who are, you know, dedicated varmint hunters, they have dedicated varmint rifles, you know, shooting long range at prairie dogs, stuff like that. There are longer barreled 223s out there, and I'm, I'm I mean, that's what this stuff is kind of meant for. If you're shooting it from a, you know, a shorter barrel, you're going to get a lower velocity. And then penetration-wise, um, most of the bullet fragments were between about the two and eight inch mark, which I think is about perfect for what this ammo is meant for. If you put this into a coyote or something, it's going to be having a bad day and you might not get complete penetration all the way through the other side. And if you do, it's probably only going to be like one little main chunk or two, which is what people are looking for with something you're shooting a coyote with. You want to maintain the pelt for, you know, make, turn it into a fur. Um, these, this load did really well, I think, for what it is. I'm really happy with it. If I was looking for a varmint load for my 223, if I was going to be doing some coyote, prairie dog hunting, anything like that, this would definitely be an option. If you've used it, let me and everybody else know how it did for you. Oh, and real quick, I forgot to mention, I'm rolling kinetic energy into every video going forward just as another metric to look at. And these generated 1,216 foot-pounds of energy at the muzzle. Now, being a varmint bullet that's meant to kind of blow up and explode, it's, it's not super important. Just something to look at. And that's right there in line with a whole bunch of other 223 loads I've tested. Hey, if you enjoy these videos, check out my website, masonleather.com, and get yourself some leather gear handmade by me just for you. I've been handcrafting leather gear for hunters for over a decade, and I would love to make you something. The link is in the video description. And check out my channel for more hunting ammo ballistics gel tests. I have some big news. Lots of you have emailed me or commented how much value you get out of my videos. And you've asked me, how can you be a part of this and help support the channel? Well, I got to work, and now I have a way. I've created a Patreon account where you can join me in helping our fellow hunters. Click the link in this video's description and watch my Patreon welcome video, where I describe to you how your help will impact this channel and our community of hunters as a whole. And when you join me on Patreon, you'll get a lot more than I can give you here on YouTube. You'll have to go watch that welcome video linked in the description to find out the details. I'll see you there.